I had no idea where she was. Hey guys, it's Graham. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be telling you the four scariest moments I had as an au pair. Before I get any further in this video, if you haven't already, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. I've seen the channel grow faster and faster and faster lately, so thank you guys so much and be sure to share it with your friends. Alright, that being said, let's jump right into this video. So first off, I'm not just making this video because Halloween is a week away, so happy early Halloween, but I have been wanting to make this video for a while because a lot of people have been asking me what are some of the scarier negative aspects of being an au pair. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you four situations <laughs> that are really memorable for me for bad reasons, and I'm gonna tell you what exactly happened and how they turned out. I am gonna be going in a backwards order, so I'm starting with the least scary, and ending up with the scariest, so be sure to hang in to the end of the video to hear my, whew, just the, the scariest moment, one of the scariest moments I've had in my life, and definitely the scariest moment I've had as an au pair. The last thing I'm gonna say before I jump into the content of this video is please go and follow me on Instagram. My page is recently launched, and be sure to send me a message letting me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I've already gotten some feedback, and I hope to keep it up. So getting that out of the way, I do want to talk about my scariest moments, and I'm starting out with scary moment number four, which is when I almost broke my host family's oven. <laughs> So to give you some context on this one, I had just started my first au pair experience. I think I was like two-ish weeks in, more or less, so still very, very green to the world of a pairing. My Spanish was not that good. I was not familiar with Spain. Just all the things that you stereotypically think of of a beginner au pair, that was me. So on this particular day, my oldest host child, Chiara, the little girl, we were going to do a craft. She loved doing crafts, so this was a good way Way that she and I could bond because I enjoy doing artsy stuff too. So the craft I had found was, you've probably seen it, where you get marbles and then you stick them in the oven and then you drop them in freezing water and the inside has this like, well, marbled, like shattered look, but of course they all stay in one big piece of a marble. I don't know, it sounds ridiculous now that I say it out loud, but it looked really cool on Pinterest. I know you're probably thinking ovens are rather self-explanatory, but in Europe they are different. For one, people don't bake as much here, and so I don't think they're as well designed here and they're a lot smaller. So on this particular oven, it just had like different pictures, and then depending on what picture you chose would be how the oven worked. So one was supposed to be for like all around heating, one was top heat, one was bottom, you get the gist. Well, I did not completely understand this oven because it had no words on it. So I tried to use just like the normal setting, the top heat, the bottom heat, but by accident, I turned it on self-clean. So at this point, we had stuck the marbles in the oven in this non-stick pan, and I turned it on self-clean and started the timer. The marbles were only supposed to stay in the oven like 20-ish minutes, and so at about 10 minutes, we were gonna open the oven to look what was inside. So when I go to open it, I realized like the oven door wouldn't open, like it was like stuck shut. And so Kiara was like, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's just being a little weird. So she tries to open it and it's not opening. So I wait and I thought, well, maybe it's gonna wait till the timer's done. So 20 minutes passed, we tried it again and it's still not working. So I sent a picture to my host mom and I was like really getting concerned. And she told me, she was like, I think you put it on self clean. That's not good. The self clean cycle runs for like four hours at the hottest setting. But then she told me that her husband was gonna be home soon and not to worry about it, he would fix it. But of course I was like really worried about it because these marbles were in there and so is this nonstick pan. And I was really genuinely worried about the pan itself, like getting too hot or melting. I know it sounds stupid, but I was worried. And to top it all off, I did the stupidest thing you could do. And I Googled what would happen if you left a pan in on self-clean. And one person said that it would like totally ruin the oven and all this. So it really freaked me out. Long story short, the host dad gets home. He was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, it'll be fine. I'll fix it. But I could definitely see in his eye that he was worried about it. So, but I went upstairs. I went about my business. And then he did eventually figure out a way to stop it. But the pan, the pan has never looked the same. It used to be red. Now it's just like this charred black, but it was fine. Like the oven did not break. And it's one of those things looking back on it. It was really stupid, but I was genuinely concerned about it in the moment. My number three scariest moment 
is not one particular moment, but it was just a collection of things, and it's when I left for my first au pair experience. I know for most people that this would not be that scary, and I was not concerned at all before I left. Going back to give you some background on this story, I had found my first host family in February of 2019, and I was not supposed to start till June. So I had plenty of time to think about things, to really concern myself over it, and I was not worried in the slightest. I was super, super excited to go, and up until like the day or even the day before I was leaving, I had genuinely never had a concern or a bad thought about this trip. But as the time did get closer, I wasn't scared as much as this mixture of like anxiety and fear. I don't even know how to describe it. It was, it was just a weird, weird emotion that culminated all the day before I left. Essentially what got me so worked up was I had put pretty much my whole life on hold back home to leave for two months to go and do this. And I know two months is not that long, but you also have to put yourself in my shoes. I had never traveled before. I had never been away from my parents for more than a few days at a time. So this was a really, really different thing for me. And I think the reality of it just all hit me at once. I started thinking about the amount of money I had spent on flights, the time I had spent preparing this, what I was going to do when I got back home. So all of these real things just hit me at once and it just made for this big storm of anxiety. Now once I did get on the plane, I was good, I was so excited and it did turn out to be the best experience of my life. I mean, it was legendary. It was so, so good. But that doesn't negate the fact that I did not mentally prepare myself for such a big jump and the reality of that jump hit me all at once and it was really, really terrifying. Of course, now looking back on it, I'm super, super thankful that I did make that leap because like I said, it was an absolutely incredible experience, but it was very scary in the moment. The number two scariest experience I've had as an au pair was also in my first experience and it was when I lost my host kid. Yes, you did hear that correctly. I did lose my host child once. She was not lost, but I lost her and it was absolutely terrifying. During my first au pair experience, the kids and I would often go to this little park that was like a three minute walk from the house. I mean, you could literally see the house from the park. Each of the kids could bring one friend and it was always the same friends for each of them. I really liked the friends and then my kids and their friends were really responsible. So I know it sounds a lot for kids, but it really was not uncomfortable for me, nor was I ever really concerned with having that many kids. Being that my oldest host kid was 10, she did not need babysitting a lot, and even my younger one was eight, so he didn't either, but my rule was that if I could not physically see them with my eyes, I did want to know where they were at, so they did have to tell me, and it was no big deal if I couldn't see them, but they had recently told me where they were going. To add on to this, there was another au pair in the urbanization, I didn't really like her, and she had brought her kids along as well. So we're all in the park, six kids in total, two of hers, four of mine, and that au pair tells me, she's like, yeah, I'm gonna run home really quickly and use the bathroom. Well, the home's like, like I said, like a three minute walk away, she lived in our urbanization, so I wasn't sweating at all, and I figured she would be back within like 15 minutes. So 15 minutes passed, 30 minutes passed, 45 minutes passed, and this girl was still not back. So at this point, I was, exhausted being with six kids. I did not want to be there any longer, so I decided we were all going home. As I was rounding the kids up, I had the neighbor kids, I had my youngest host child with his friend, but I realized Kiara, the 10-year-old, and her friend were missing. Like I said, at first this really didn't freak me out that much because I did have this rule to where they told me where they were going, but I was thinking back on it and I couldn't remember if they had told me where they were going. As a matter of fact, I was positive that they had not told me. So I had no idea where they were. I looked around the park and I was asking the other kids if they had seen them, they hadn't. I didn't see them in the park and by this point, I was really, really concerned about where they were. There is a grocery store adjacent to the park and oftentimes the kids would go inside there to use the restroom. So I went in the grocery store. I have like all four kids in tow because I didn't want to let any of them out of my sight. I went to the grocery store. Nobody 
everybody had seen them there, we go back to the park. So at this point, I'm delegating to each of the kids to look in different areas. Also, we're like 10 minutes into it at this point, so it had been, I would say, a good 20 minutes since I had seen the girls. And needless to say, I was freaking out. Like, I'm not an anxious person. I'm not someone who gets worked up easily, but I was really, really freaking out at this point. I mean, it, it really, really scared me. So finally, one of the kids did see them, and they were on the other side of the park. I went over there, and Kiara essentially told me that she had tried to tell me, or she did tell me, that where they were going, and I just didn't hear them, or I don't know. And she was probably telling the truth. I mean, I was so busy taking care of all the other kids. It did work out well, and they weren't lost. I was really the one who was lost, but that was a terrifying moment, and I'm still not really over it that that au pair just left me with her kids. Because had it just been my four kids, that would have never happened. Okay, so here we go. Number one scariest moment of my three au pair experiences, and that was getting kicked out. Now, to give you some qualifier here, getting kicked out was actually not that scary. I kind of anticipated it. It was the moment that I realized I had to leave that was so scary. Here's why. If you're not familiar with my au pair horror story, I will be sure to link it right up here so you can go and watch it. Just to briefly sum it up, I had agreed to spend the winter of 2020 with this family in Madrid. It was early January. I had been with him about a week when I knew I just had to go. A lot of stuff had happened in a week's time, and I knew just after seven days that these people were not a good match for me. This particular day was a Thursday. I remember it so, so well. I had been there exactly a week at this point, and some things that happened that day and the day before just confirmed to me what I was already suspicious of, which was I had to get out of there. In order to get away from the mom who was in the house, I had gone to a coffee shop nearby, and essentially I was just like trying to weigh out my options as to what I could do or what my possibilities were moving forward. To add on to this story, there were some other things in play. At the time, my brother was also in Europe and we had planned to take two trips in February to different parts of Europe. Collectively on these two trips, I think I had spent about $400 and the majority of that money was not refundable. So if I was to go home immediately, I would have lost quite a lot of money and it was going to cost a good chunk of change to change my flight. So taking that into consideration, as I was looking at my opportunities as to what I could do, I just had this staggering realization that I was stuck. I had gotten myself in this really icky position and there was no good option to get myself out. Looking for just some kind of relief, I called my dad and I was hoping he would provide me with some kind of like crazy realization. But while I was on the phone with him, just listening to what he was saying, it really hit me in full force that I had made a big boy decision to come to Spain again, to put my studies on hold, to put my business on hold, and now I was dealing with a big boy consequence, and that this one thing could potentially affect my entire year, and it did for the better in the end. But having that realization was so terrifying because I knew I had made a huge mistake that I could not get out of. In the end, three days later, the host family did actually kick me out. <laughs> and like I said in the beginning of this point, getting kicked out itself was not that scary. I mean, it was bad. It was bad, but I was kind of expecting it. The worst part was definitely realizing that I had to do something and none of my options were good. Now, it all did work out in the end, thankfully, and I did make another video about that called my Opera Horror Story Part 2, and I will also attach it up here. But nonetheless, that moment was just really, really scary for me and very traumatic. Like, that one still sticks out in my head and I think about it frequently. I'm very thankful for it. I learned a lot from it but it was really, really scary. Okay guys, so those are my four scariest moments as an au pair. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment down below. I post new content every single Monday and Thursday, so be sure to check it out when it comes, and I can't wait to see you then. Muchas gracias por ver y hasta luego. Chao.